Hey everybody, Dilly Really here. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of The Charming Empire. Today we are starting on Koichiro Sera's route. Koichiro Sera, episode one. Oh, he's so pretty. Oh, so I kind of clicked in there prematurely. But yeah, I'm gonna, I'm starting with him. And, uh, Gentle is starting with K. Yoshimine on his channel. So if you'd like to hear his route right now, go ahead and go to his channel. But I'm gonna get started with Koichiro here. So you can just sit back, relax, and let me read you a story. I'm led to my brother's office as soon as I get to the palace. Excuse me, your highness. We bought the princess. My brother looks up from his conversation with the men around his desk to glance at me. Very good. That is all. Return to your posts. Man, my brother's hot. There we go. I can hit space bar to get rid of the, the bar. Yes, sire. Excuse us. The men around my brother's desk bow and quickly leave the room. Now the only ones in the room are me, my brother, and the two servants. I muster up the courage to break the ice. Huh. Hi, Soshi. Long time no see. It's... I'm sure you had a long trip. You will be living here from now on. Well, he looks happy. Um, what? So she ignores me and continues. So that you don't embarrass the family name, you will perfect your etiquette and education and become an upstanding lady. He tells me I'll have my own bodyguard and sends me away. What? Is that all? Uh, say some brotherly things. I find out later that the man standing diagonally behind me is Koichiro Sera. Somebody who will have lots to do with soon. He should have introduced himself before. The man was silent for the whole car ride here. I was wondering who he was the whole time. I didn't even know he was there. They only said the steward and the driver. I'm forced into the car before I can say goodbye. I watch my elderly guardians fade into the distance as we drive away. I'm in a daze from the sudden turn of events, but watching the scenery pass by calms me down. A man was in the car when I got in. He's wearing a kimono and just stares at me in silence. He has a nice face, but his eyes are cold as ice. He huddles his big body uncomfortably in the corner of the car. There's something intimidating about him. I see one of the guys who came to get me. I have to introduce myself. Nice to meet you. I'm... But the man just closes his eyes and turns to the window with a bored look. He won't even let me say hi? That's rude. I'm your princess, you know. I know my complaining won't get me anywhere, but what a rude guy. I hope not everyone at the palace is like this. There's still a ways until we reach the capital, but I'm already starting to dread it. The driver calls out to me kindly when I finally look up from my thoughts. I'll be taking you to the capital today, princess. Oh, okay. Thank you. I'm glad this man is normal. I guess not everyone is unfriendly around here. I've been nervous about my future ever since I got into the car, but I try to calm myself down. I turn back to the man next to me and try to talk to him again. Um... Sorry for not introducing myself sooner. It's nice to meet you. The man doesn't move a muscle and continues to stare out the window. It's not like he can't hear me, right? He's always like that. Don't let it bother you. The servant explains with an awkward smile. I see. Why did such a rude guy come to get me? I wonder what he does. I get caught up in the passing scenery as I think to myself. Even though everything up close is moving by so fast... The mountains in the distance stay in place. It's such a fascinating sight. I could stare at it for hours. Wow, I didn't know cars could go so fast. Oh yeah. I've always wanted to have the windows open as I travel in a car, so I asked the driver. Can I open the window? Someone told me it feels great when the wind blows through your hair. Uh, it depends on how hot or cold it is. No. You look awfully tiny in the car here, buddy. The background is not appropriately scaled. The rude guy answers first, and he looks even grumpier than before. Why not? I refuse to back down without an explanation. I might have come off as aggressive, but there's no response from him. We shall listen to what he says. The driver gives me another awkward smile through the rearview window. I'm sorry, princess. That's okay. Hey, keep your eyes on the road. The driver cringes at the rude guy's sharp tone. I don't think he's saying anything wrong, but... He seems kind of hard to deal with. Since I can't convince him to let me open the window, I just keep staring out of it instead. Suddenly, the car screeches to a stop. Whoa! My body flies forward, but the guy next to me holds me back with his arm before I collide with the seat in front of me. Th thank you. When I turn to thank him, the guy isn't looking at me. 
What are you doing? Let's go. He shouldn't yell over a sudden stop, but I realize why he's in such a hurry right away. He pulls me into his arms. I'm surrounded by his warmth and I can't move. W what? What's going on? Since my village was full of kids, I've never been so close to a man before. My face is nestled against his chest, and I can't see anything. Suddenly, I hear the sound of glass shatter. What's going on? I think it's Revels. When I try to look up, the man forces my head down. Don't move. Stay quiet. His deep voice in my ear makes me freeze. Is everything okay? It's scarier when I can't see anything. No, everything's not okay, clearly. I secretly grab onto the man's kimono out of fear. Ah! A few seconds later, I hear the servant sitting next to me yell. Oh! The man suddenly pulls me out of the car by the arm. Now that my face isn't buried in the man's chest anymore, I can see some bandits nearby. Oh, not even rebels, they're bandits. I heard about the bandits on the road to the capital. A picture already! The man stands in front of me to protect me and takes a dagger from his breast pocket. He surveys the bandits and glances at me. I hope you're proficient with that. Don't leave my side. His tone is cold, but it seems like I can trust him. Okay. I hide behind him. I hear a bandit scream each time he shifts his position. I guess he is good. Sometimes he spins around to handle the attacks from all directions, but I stay glued to his back the whole time. Wow, how am I sticking to his back when he spins? I hope I'm not in the way. Just when I think this, the man stops in his tracks. When I slowly gaze up, he gives me an annoyed look. Can you let go? Oh, Mana! Oh, sorry. Even though it's an emergency situation, my behavior is probably inappropriate. I quickly let go and bow apologetically. Do you understand where you stand now? Where I stand? When I look confused, he lets out an exaggerated sigh. I don't know how you've lived all these years, but from now on you're a target. Well, I wasn't a target before. I look around and see the bandits on the ground. A target? You mean the bandits were after me? If you don't understand that, we're in for a long ride. He turns his back to me. Talking in a place like this is just asking to be attacked. We need to get to the capital. The man goes around to check if the driver and servants are conscious. Oh, man. This is why I hate the countryside. I'm so sorry, princess. Are you alright? Luckily, everyone is okay, and they stand up with worried glances at me. Let's go, princess. I can't believe you lost time here. Yeah, let's get moving to the capital. Sorry about that, Sarah. The man called Sarah makes sure everyone is safe before getting into the car. After that, he didn't talk to me the whole trip. I kept trying to talk to him, but I stopped after a while because it felt like I was talking to a despondent doll. This man, who I found out is named Koichi Sara, isn't very expressive. I've only seen him look annoyed and upset, but I've never seen him smile. If he's my bodyguard, does that mean he'll be with me all the time? That's no fun. After talking with my brother, Sarah leads me to my room. Maybe he'll get more fun as time goes along. Hopefully, he should. It's an Otome game. Hey, Sarah, oh, what was your job before I came here? Sarah walks slower now that we're inside the palace, so I walk by his side and ask him a question. But Sarah doesn't answer. I knew he probably wouldn't, but it still makes me sad. He should at least answer when I ask a question. My footsteps get heavy. I try asking him some more questions, but still no luck. I don't know what Sarah's thinking, but... His silence makes the walk down the hall seem longer than it really is. Just when I think I'm going to explode, Sarah stops in front of a room. He opens the door and a sweet floral scent comes pouring out. What a nice smell. I peer into the room and notice it's lit up with bright glass lamps. Wow, this is a pretty big room. W wow! I admire the room in awe. I rub my eyes, but it's not a dream. I think, uh, the big windows aren't very safe. It's not a secure room. Is this beautiful place really my room? I turn to Sarah. He doesn't look like he's playing a prank. Does he really seem like the kind of guy to play pranks? Is this really my room? Yes. Is there a problem? Uh, there isn't a guide out yet, but the way people work, 
I fully expect there to be one already started, maybe even done tomorrow. But uh, I'm going to guess no but. Because I feel like I'm not worthy is just too much exaggerated humility. Oh, yep, it worked. That was the correct choice. No, there's no problem, but is it really okay for me to have such a nice room? If you don't have this room, there isn't another room for you. Really? In this whole palace, there's only one available room? His cold tone makes me swallow my words. I need to be grateful for getting such a nice room. I take another look around. The first thing that catches my eye is a beautiful array of flowers in the middle of the room. The freshly cut flowers are practically overflowing out of their glass vase. All of the furniture is also very detailed, and the curtains and quilts are carefully embroidered. Wow. I walk toward my bed and touch the refined bedspread. Everything is beautiful, but my eye is drawn to the cherry blossom embroidered blankets the most. My eyes are drawn to Koichiro. This must have taken forever to make. What a beautiful room. It's almost fit for a princess. I'm so impressed that I have to say my feelings out loud. Uh, aren't I a princess? Even though I know Sarah might not answer me, I turn to him anyway. But... Oh! Sarah's suddenly closer than I thought, and I cry out in surprise. W why are you so close? It's my job to protect you. I can't do that from far away. I start to doubt myself when Sarah sounds like it's the most obvious thing in the world. But he's definitely way too close. I can't relax if he's this close to me all the time. Eh, you'll get used to it. Um, I don't think you have to be this close to protect me, so can you... No. <laughs> uh, I love that. It's just that simple. Sarah cuts me off so strongly that I doubt I can change his mind. Uh, is he always going to be like this? I sigh and sit down in a chair in the middle of the room. I absentmindedly reach out to touch the fallen petals on the tablecloth. Don't touch that. What? Sarah grabs my arm. Huh? I think you're being overprotective now. I told you you're a target. He picks up the vase of flowers and walks to the door. I expect him to leave, but he just hands the vase to a servant in the hallway and immediately comes back to my side. No one told me about these flowers, so they might be a part of a dangerous ploy. You shouldn't touch them. Oh, I can't believe I've been targeted twice in the same day. We don't know. That was a maybe. Soshi is the emperor of this country, so that makes me the princess. I already knew that much, but I didn't realize how dangerous my position was. Even though the window isn't open, I feel a chill on my skin. Am I going to be okay? Don't worry. My job is to protect you. <gasps> and he got a smile. Hmm? But I didn't say anything. Is he a mind reader? Worried I'm wearing my feelings on my sleeve, I quickly smile, but it's probably too late. I look at Sarah from my chair, and he's staring right back at me. He has his usual piercing gaze, but it doesn't seem as cold as before. It even seems calming. Maybe he's just a stoic kind of guy. Yes, my favorite type. I don't know, I have a lot of types. <laughs> he never answers me when I talk to him, but since we're stuck together, we might as well be friends. I'm in your hands. I give Sarah a friendly bow. Before you say that, you should try watching your own back. What? I'm surprised he actually answers me. I look up at him, but he just scoffs at me and avoids my gaze. He answered me. I'm strangely excited by the fact that he finally stopped ignoring me. Okay, I'll be careful. When I speak to him happily, Sarah grunts in reply. I think we can make this work. All of the anxiety I felt about coming to the capital melts away. I glance at myself in the mirror, and there's a smile on my face. Hmm. Oh, and, wow, well, okay, so these are going to be short chapters. Uh, but, yeah, we're starting chapter two in the next video, so that's the end of this. I wonder how many chapters there are. This isn't set up the way traditional Dogenzaka game chapters are set up, so I don't know. I hope I'll know when it comes to the ending, because I don't want to record a whole video and then <laughs> find out it's the ending and I can't air it. Well, I guess that's a possibility. Oh, well. Well, anyway, uh, hope you enjoyed that. And I would love to see you in the next video or some of my other ones. And I'd be so grateful for any likes, comments, subscriptions, or shares with your friends to show some support. Thank you so much for joining me. And I wish you all health, happiness, and safety. Do really signing out. Bye-bye, everybody.